is ready. That time they were paying us around, I think I, we started like at eight, I think 800,000. But remember, I was doing a show once a week. And I was filming a show once a week. Because we would only film, let's say, on Saturday. You know how schools have proms? Let's say Hannah Mixed has a prom party. Uh, Taiba has a prom party. So usually we go on Saturday, we film in the field, and then we also shoot the links. Links are like, oh, hi, welcome to the show. This is Teen Nation. That's what links are. Then, of course, the other activities that are going on in different schools. So um, the show is doing good. Everyone was watching the show. People loved Sheila. People loved the other presenter. We were just a perfect team. Raymond really loved the show. He's one of the guys that I've worked with that loved like what he was doing. The, sec the show actually had one segment for field and one, seg uh, one, one segment had like movie trailers and one was a music countdown. So it was a three segmented show and it was so popular. I remember that time Buzz, Buzz uh, the Buzz events team, I think that's Swangs Avenue, Julius Chaze, he, he's actually one person that I rarely talk about. He called me for my first gig like as an MC. He's like, Hi, Sheila, how are you? Guess what? We have Miss Teens. Miss Teens, can you MC? I'm like, oh, OK, yeah, I can MC. I remember they used to pay us 500,000. 500, so we would go MC. Buzz Awards, Buzz Teens Awards. They call us again. They would pay us. You reach there, they, you reach there, report on duty. They give you your 500,000. You're OK. Just like that. That time, for me, really growing up, I never took fame, really never. It, it, like it would make me happy, but it wouldn't excite me. I felt like everything was normal. So Julius Chaze, shout out to you, the whole Buzz events. They gave me my first gigs. I used to MC Miss Teens. I used to MC uh, Buzz Teens Awards. Any event that, that Buzz actually had. Then there came an event called Kadanke. Kadanke was owned by um, Rena. He also started doing school tours. So what we would do on those school tours, we started um, going to different schools with Kadanke group. And literally, wh when we were at those schools, we have people dancing, people singing, different competitions, people win t-shirts. You know how school things are. People win t-shirts, others win magazines, others win pens. But the whole fact that we were emceeing all these schools, it actually made us popular in the schools as well. During that period as well, we won different awards, like Miss, I won Best Teens TV Presenter, Best Teens Award. I, the show also won Best Teens TV Show. Uh, we got a new producer called Andrew. That time, <laughs> Andrew was super cool. Now with Andrew, him, he was, you know someone who is older than you guys, but he makes you guys feel like teens. Like you enter the teen schools and he just knows the vibe. Like he, he, he was the vibe. So during my year 11, after, at the end of the year 11, Kaboja, the school that I was in, um, had a trip. We were supposed to go to South Africa. So I told, I, I told um, my producer then, Andrew, I was like, you know what, you guys, I may not be around. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to South Africa for a trip. So when I told my dad as well, and I told Andrew, I was like, by the way, why don't we go and cover? Why don't we go cover, um, you know, as teen nation? Because Kaboja as a school was going with all my other classmates to South Africa. And it felt like it would be good content. I was always the type of person who had, who I felt like I wanted to, to bring something different on TV. So what I told Andrew, I was like, you know what, Andrew, let me talk to my dad somehow. We see how NTV can come on to the show. And also we talked to the production manager who was Kathy then. So Kathy said, you know what, that's a brilliant idea. That's cool. You know, NTV, let Kaboja will pay half and then NTV will pay half. So it was me, the other presenter I was working with, and Andrew. NTV paid for half the, you know, half the trip and Kaboja paid for half the trip. They, it was a two-way, you know, a win-win-win situation. That was the first trip I ever went to for working as a TV presenter. And we did, you know, we did some good sites in Joburg, we did some good sites in, in Cape Town. And we were back to Uganda. The content was good. People loved the content. It was something unique. And yeah, the company, I loved that the company had supported. And it was something, you know, like with the Kenyans, I felt like they knew the Kenyans really were also in there for things that are different. The content was different. So after some period, unfortunately, the Kenyan management left. When the Kenyan management left, they bought in Ugandan management. 
before I forget, T Nation was a sponsored show from the day I started being on the show to the, the time I left being on the show. It was always sponsored by Fanta all the time. So when the, ki when, when the Kenyans left, the Ugandan management came in. So by that time I was 19 and I felt like I was clocking my 20s. Like I said to you guys, I'm the type of person who feels like I don't have to be in a certain place for long. I have to grow myself as a TV presenter and I love challenges. So there was a lady called Zina. Um, I walked into Zina's office and I'm like, you know, Zina, I'm turning 20. So I won't be a teenager anymore. Like, it doesn't make sense for me to be on a teen show when I'm 20. So I said to her, um, Zina, I think I want to be on the beat now. That's what I told her. And she's like, Sheila, it's a live show. It's a live show Monday to Friday. You have school. And I said to her, Zina, I don't want to be on the show every day. That's not what I want. I just want to do a small segment. And she's like, Sheila, are you, are you, are you ready for the pressure? And I said, yeah, I'm ready for the pressure. She's like, Sheila, but the teens love you and Teen Nation. What are we going to do? How are we going to get a new presenter? This is just too much. Well, how are we going to do this? And I said to her, Zina, Honestly, I feel like I need a new challenge. And trust me, they took them a very long time to get a presenter, like a very, very long time. But I stood my ground, I said I wanted to be on the beat. When I went over to be on the beat, I told them, since I have school from Monday to Friday, I'll be doing exclusive access. Now, exclusive access, I felt like, we, you know, TV plays a lot of artist music, but we don't know how these artists produce the music. We don't know the music producers. We don't know how videos are being you know, directed, who are these video directors. There's so much that's behind these artists that we don't know that I want to bring on to the show. So that required me to film, film, um, that required me to film once a week. Remember that time we were still pay being paid per month, we weren't, we weren't paid, um, we weren't paid per show. So I was still earning around 800, 800,000. And with NTV, what was happening at that time, every time you won an award, they would always add a little bit on your salary the following year. So my salary used to be added like at least 60,000 by 60,000, but you could see appreciation that you've done something and you, you know, you're being appreciated and there's just a little bit of more money coming to you, your salary because a little bit of more is better than nothing at all. So I said doing um, exclusive access, I said doing different music video, uh, behind the scenes videos. I remember my music, first behind the scenes music video was Shiba's video. That time when Jeff had started managing her, she did the song By The Way. That was my first uh, behind the scenes music video for exclusive access. Everyone loved the content. It's, I was bringing what people don't know about artists to, to the show and that's what people liked as well. Douglas Wanga was doing super, super good on the live. I was doing good in the field, we bringing the exclusive access. We were just the perfect team. We were winning different awards. It was just the beat was like the talk of the town. Like literally everyone used to watch the beat. You, you wouldn't go to no saloon and you don't see, you don't watch NTV the beat. It was literally in garages, saloons, schools, everywhere. The time the show was doing super good, we had a super amazing sponsor that was Coca-Cola. And guess what? My Instagram was blowing up. I was getting tons and tons of followers. So when I finished here, when I finished school, because that time I was in Galaxy International School, um, near, in year 12, when I finished school, I said, uh, no, when I finished school, Zina was like, you know what? Since you're now, you know, since you're not, you're not in school all the time, you should do the live show because people actually love the, love the exclusive access. And the thing is that with my kind of brand and personality, I was bringing, I was, I was bringing something different. Zina once told me, she's like, Sheila, the thing about you is that so many people followed you when you were on Teens Club. So we want those teenagers, those cool teenagers, those kids from international schools as well, to start watching the beat. So I think it's a good idea for you to do the live show. I was super excited. Actually, I remember going onto my Facebook. I think I would try to look for the po post and show it to you. I was like, guys, imagine I used to love watching the beat, and now I'm on the beat. I felt happy. Like, I love it when I achieve, you know, something new, when I have a challenge. So by that time, uh, a lady called Posh, 
she had just come from London and she had the biggest store in Uganda. She had all the cool clothes from London. She called me up and she's like, Sheila, I love you. I want to be styling you every day. So she started styling me. I used to take great pictures for Instagram. I used to look smart on the show. So many callers used to call me and say, we love your style. We like you. So on the show, I used to not only be a good TV presenter, but I also used to bring a little bit of the, on, of the style as well. People always ask me, Sheila, how did you manage to be TV pre presenter that's different from people? I'll be giving you guys the points later as well. But <clears throat> shout out to Posh, Posh by Casey. She used to be my stylist. And we just everything was just perfect then. So um, in between then, one day I got an, a message on Twitter actually from someone from Afisil. It's called Moh Moh Mohammed. Yeah, he's called Mohammed, And he messaged me, he's like, hi, Sheila. Um, we, we love your Twitter. We, we love your Instagram. We would like you to come in for a meeting. So I'm like, daddy, can you guess what someone from Afisil just, you know, just messaged me on Twitter? He's like, what they did? And I'd been on Afisil since it was even orange, like I'd been using the network from before it was orange, like from way back. And I felt like I was the perfect person to be in the meeting. So I went to, uh, to Afrisel, Sheila, just being Sheila. They're like, Sheila, we feel like you should be our brand ambassador. I was like, what? Like this is, like I literally love Afrisel. This, this was, that was one of the best things. I f you know, there's nothing as good as endorsing a product you love and you've used. So I signed the contract. I was doing the adverts. Swangs Avenue was shooting the adverts. I remember doing the adverts and the guy, because the, 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 the boss then was like from Lebanon. He was like, wow, you do one takes? Because we were filming with other artists as well. But since like, the artists weren't like TV presenters, they were taking a longer time to finish the advert. But I shot two adverts in one day and they were like, wow, you're super, super good. They liked my vibe. So many people used to go on Twitter. Every time they had a problem on, on, with Afrisil, they, they tagged Sheila Gashumba, I have a problem with Afrisil. And my journey of endorsements started then. We started doing different endorsements. I'll put them down for you guys to read as well. I cannot sp speak about all the endorsements I, I did since I was young. I did so many endorsements. Then, unfortunately, this is where all the drama started coming from. So in between all the fame, the success of the TV show, they said to us at NTV that, you know what, guys, we need a meeting. So we got to the meeting. They said, we're not going to be paying you per month anymore, like a whole amount. We're going to be giving you guys a payment per show. So since I was so exposed then, I was excited. I was like, if they're paying me per show, if they've been paying me 800000 a month, and they're paying me per show, that means I'm going to be earning more money. And guess what? They bring the contracts, and they're like 50000 per show. So I was like, hmm, OK, let me do the math. I was like, you're doing a show five times a week, five times a week, 50000 that's little money. I went back to my dad. I'm like, Daddy, can you imagine you're going to be paying us 50000 per month? Like, what's this? He's like, what? What's happening? Like, they used to give us 800000 per month for less work. Now you have to be on the show every single day for 50000 For me, it wasn't making sense. I complained to my dad. My dad was like, you know what, Dad? He's like, you know what, Sheila? Can you please calm down? Let me call. Let me call someone at NTV to make me understand what is happening. <laughs> so I called Zina and my dad really used, he used to come to pick me up every single day from work, but he would only park his car. He sits there on his phone. Everyone knows him. Everyone used to make fun of him like, hey, Sheila, your dad is always outside on the phone waiting for you all the time. This time he's like, he woke up very well, dressed up in his suit, came, sat down and said, ah, Zina, now what's happening here? Zina was like, you know what? I'm going to try to push for better because Zina was the type of lady who, oh, she was a good listener and she would always try. I like people who try. I don't like people who dismiss something like, no, this is what they should get. My dad was like, finally they said, no, there's, there's nothing they can do about it. I said, okay, no problem. I still love being on the beat. I love doing the show. But things didn't go so well. People like MC Katz, when he saw the whole 50,000 per day, he said, me, I'm out of this place. I remember we even, we, we as presenters called ourselves one day and we said, you guys, you know what, let's strike. Let's not be on the show. But as you know, other TV presenters snaked us, they went and did their shows. So we looked stupid. Now all of us had to go back and do our shows. Next morning, MC Katz puts, puts, 
put in his resignation letter to a TV that had just started then NBS. Most people thought, oh, you know, he's going to NBS, NTV is a big TV company, he's not going to make it, but he went with his brand as A Cuts and started doing his show on, you know, on NBS and he grew the show. So people like me, Douglas Luanga, we stayed on the show, we kept pushing because we loved the brand and we just said, you know, maybe it will work, maybe things are going to get better. In between there, Douglas Luanga, one of the TV's cream de la cream in the entertainment industry, put in his resignation letter. But before he actually put in his resignation letter, I forgot to mention that during that period when I was on the beat, like I told you, I used to try and, and you know, get different deals or, you know, get different award shows. I remember there's a time um, MTV Best was happening, actually Channel O was happening, and I was the only Ugandan presenter at the Channel O Awards. Actually, they were the last Channel O Music Awards that happened in Africa. They were the last ones. I sent an email, I was like, who is the boss? Thankfully, the boss of Channel O Awards that time was a Ugandan. I think she's called Lika Sumba? Yes. I sent her a message on Twitter. I tweeted, I was like, hello, I'm Sheila Gashumba. I would like to send you an email. Can you please send, forward me your email? She, she was actually super nice. She sent me an email. I put for her my profile. My dad has always been like very, like very, you know, details. He has my profile ready. I emailed him like, hi, I'm Sheila Gashumba. I work for NTV. I'd like to cover the Channel O Awards. She said, okay, yeah, you can come cover. They send me all the emails. You know how South Africans do their things? Because the whole team is from South Africa. They send me all what I need to do, where all the passes. And guess what? I go to the NTV bosses. I'm like, you know what? I have what? I have um, awards to go to. They have accepted me. They said, oh, you know what, Sheila, but I think this may, this may be last, last notice. We don't think we have the money to give you for the air ticket. The most we can give you is money that you can use per day. Those days, they were speed per diem. They'll give you some money for lunch and dinner and transport while you're out there in a different country working. But they said, we cannot afford your ticket at this period.